previous lesson we talked about the process of differentiation and we used the function notation and we said that if function of x was x to the power n then the gradient function which we used the dash f dashed x is nx to the n minus 1. If we use the y equals notation, which is how the people used that invented it, then they came up with uh, a method that led to a different way of calling this, uh, this answer the gradient function. And they end up with something written like this, that at first sight doesn't really appear to be anything like what we're actually doing. So you just have to take it on trust really at this stage that it is very, very, um, very carefully linked to what we're doing. Now, dy by dx, that's the way that we uh, pronounce this uh, expression here. Now this, this doesn't mean d times y over d times x. It doesn't even mean dy divided by dx. The whole thing is a symbol on its own, a symbol in its own right. So let's just emphasize that by putting a box around it. And the whole symbol means differentiate. Okay, it's the result of differentiating, finding the gradient function of x to the power n. So if we had a simple numerical example, if y was equal to x to the 7, then dy by dx, the gradient function, is 7x to the power 6. It's as easy as that to use. Still don't worry too much about where this is going to at the moment. In this lesson then we're going to look at expanding this rule, making it a little bit more complicated and then you'll be surprised how quickly we can differentiate some much longer looking uh, functions. The first thing that um, we need to be aware of are particular cases of values of n. So let's worry about if n is 1. So if n is 1, y equals x to the 1. So according to the rule, dy by dx equals, now n is 1, so we have 1 times x to the power 1 minus 1, which is 0. So we have 1 times x to the 0, and of course anything to the 0 is 1, so dy by dx is 1. So if I differentiate x, I get 1. The other thing I need to worry about is if I differentiate 1. Now 1 is equal to x to the power 0. So according to the rule, dy by dx equals n is 0, x to the 0 minus 1. And 0 times x to the negative 1 is of course 0. So if I differentiate 1, I get 0. Now that's actually no surprise at all because what am I actually saying here? Well, the graph of y equals x is, of course, a straight line like that. What is the gradient of that line? It's always 1. It's not a curved line. It doesn't change. So it's not surprising that the gradient is 1. And if I look at the line y equals 1, what does that line look like? Well, it's horizontal. It has no gradient. So the gradient is 0. So we need to bear in mind those two special cases. So where shall I go from x to the n? Well, 
I'll often have a number in front of x to the n. So I might have y equals 6x to the 5. What is the significance of that 6? Well, it's very easy. It stays there and multiplies the gradient function by 6. So dy by dx equals the 6 stays there for the moment and I'm worried about x to the 5. x to the 5 is 5x to the 4 gives me 30x to the 4. So my rule then changes, so if y is k times x to the n, dy by dx equals kn x to the n minus 1. All right, let's put all of that together and differentiate y equals 5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 11x minus 3, which is a cubic polynomial to give it its full title. A polynomial is sums of or differences of different powers of x. So now I'm going to extend my method to a polynomial. If I want to differentiate, I differentiate term by term as I'm going along. So 5x cubed is 5 times 3x squared. 4x squared is 4 times 2x. Now think about what happens with 11x. That's easy isn't it because 11x again is a straight line and if I differentiated 1, uh, sorry, 1x, I had ended up with 1. So if I differentiate 11x, I'll end up with 11. And then finally, if I differentiated 1, I had an answer of 0. Well, negative 3 will still be a horizontal line, so if I differentiate it, that will also be 0. So I don't even need, need to write anything down there at all. You always tidy this up at the end. You mustn't leave the answer like that. They, the examiners certainly won't like that, and they'll say, well, you haven't, you haven't finished it until you've tidied it up. So the final answer then, 15x squared, take away 8x, plus 11. And you can differentiate any polynomial in that way. Just do it one term at a time make use of our kx to the n rule and just be careful with the tidying up at the end. Okay Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well I want x on its own, so I would put x 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.